as we cover many an insane movie and numerous cult TV phenomenon. Are you ready to get jacked up? Are you with us? Then listen on. chicken sandwich. I thought, I thought you would like hamburger sandwich with French fried potatoes. French fried potatoes oh, garnish. Oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> Joe, now you, you magnificent bastard, I read, read your menu. You have <laughs> successfully made us all hungry now. <laughs> well, I actually have a second one waiting, but I'm going to just let that sit for a while. Can you smell what Sherman is cooking? <laughs> Can you smell? All right, so I'm going to have everyone say hi after I name drop you all. Uh, joining us is J.J. Bruno. Hello. Jonathan Mark. What's up, everybody? Rob Antiquera. It doesn't matter what my name is. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> oh, damn. Hello, everyone. Hello. And David German. Good evening, all. We can smell what the, we're cooking. So I'm going to just circle around just real fast, like we do with all these roles and filmmaker retrospects. Just what was our introduction? Why any of this person kind of left some kind of positive influence on us? Um, uh, since Rob's been absent and fighting the second Korean War, I'm going to let him <laughs> in. Uh, what made The Rock kind of gel with you, aside from just liking some wrestling and just cult movies was he the second coming of roddy piper if not the second coming of arnold schwarzenegger or was he just his own kind of unique style that's kind of appealed i think he was a bit of both actually you know <laughs> that um you know roddy you mentioned roddy roddy had that charisma that just shown through even when he was the heel you know and that that's where rock succeeded as a wrestler uh, to, to be honest, uh, when he he was a babyface when he debuted and everyone hated him, <laughs> yeah. So uh, he he went heel and he just excelled to the point where he 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 basically put himself over just being just one of the most excellent uh, heels in in wrestling. You know, it, it, it's funny too because it's like he he comes out. Oh, and he's a heel, and you're supposed to hate the heel and shit. But he was just so damn charismatic that you couldn't help but love the guy, no matter what he did, as, as much as he tried to piss you off. And that uh, uh, that really won me over with with him. As as far as wrestling standpoint, as movies, yeah, you could you could say that uh, he uh, honestly more or less was, you know, kind of set up to be the second. In coming of Arnold, especially when you go to the rundown, and mm -hmm. Arnold has his cameo in uh, the rundown where he's basically like symbolically passing the torch to him, with, like have fun, and <laughs> yes, yeah, that made me smile. Yeah, yeah, and then like I remember being in the theater and just immediately getting what that meant, you know, and oh, just nice. uh, yeah, watching that, and uh, it was like you 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 knew that the, that's exactly what happened in that moment. Arnold was saying like, "Here, go ahead, do your thing, kid." And uh, right, yeah. Mm -hmm. I oh, mean, that, they're all stated. They're yeah. Stated. Uh, JJ, what made you give a shit about The Rock? Um. Well, first off, I remember him, as you said, from wrestling when he came in as uh, Rocky Maivia, because his grandfather was High Chief Peter Maivia. His family is like one of the oldest. Is one of the it's Samoan. A Samoan. Yeah. Yeah, they're like 
his uncles are the wild Samoans, you know, the whole lineage is printed up. Rocky Johnson. Yeah. (laughs) So, uh, when he became the rock, like you said, his, he was in a a stable called the nation of domination, which is kind of like a takeoff on like a, like a black power movement. But the thing was with him that his character everybody like you would like see the guys and they always look generic but with him it was like your eyes just went to him yeah mm. and, and that's the thing if either you can if you're put over on the fans and you start saying you know the rock the rock the rock and it's like the it, rock. All, of sudden, all of a sudden everybody's like oh wait wait hold on who are the other you, because that's the thing with him it was who's in the nation of domination and everybody would say like this guy but the rock was in it and the rock he, he took over that's yeah. what it was he has that that thing of taking over and like you said Roddy Piper had it um Hulk Hogan didn't have it but uh you know he had that charisma about him and that's the thing i like and the thing i like too is when he was when he first started out he took a role i think his first role was in uh an Elmore Leonard based movie get shorty uh, that was later, but I know what you mean. Be cool, which was the sequel to that. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. That that was definitely the one. Well, I'll, I'll get to that later, actually. But yeah, no, that, that's but, a good point. But when they were when he was getting primed to do Hollywood, everybody started thinking, oh, you know, another muscle head, you know, like Arnold. But when you think about it, he kind of he had that charisma about him too. That way of like you know saying, hey, folks, I may be a wrestler in the ring, but out of the ring in this movie theater i'm gonna make you laugh i'm gonna make you cheer for me you know so that's that's what i liked about him and and the roles he's taken are either he he looks at the script he goes yes or no that's what i think what he does and that's what i love Hmm. about him absolutely um so uh uh jonathan um you know i i know you've seen so many of his movies but uh what mm-hmm. kind of resonates with The Rock's persona that just even makes you want to give a chance, take a chance on this movie, regardless of what, what are its quality is going to be up to par or not? Well, like everyone else said, it's pretty much his charisma that he brought to the screen and what he brings to some of his characters is what definitely establishes him from other stars like him for sure uh german uh how were you introduced to uh uh dwayne johnson was it just well well i was was never a big wrestling fan i think i was aware of uh, Mm -hmm. dwayne johnson like on the peripheral i mean you could he was such a huge uh character in wrestling you couldn't help but catch him um even if you weren't paying attention to wrestling but i think it was probably the mummy returns and then Mm -hmm. which is like some of the worst CGI I've ever seen in, like a, <laughs> in a major uh, studio. Like I remember watching it, and when his like head is on that thing, it was, it was just mm. so. So I was ready. I was ready to totally dismiss him as just you know a, a wrestler who was trying. But then I, um, like Rob mentioned, uh, the rundown, and this movie, the rundown, um, absolutely blew me away. I actually adore this movie. It's exactly what you want. It's like it's like a refreshing. It's it doesn't take itself seriously. He doesn't take himself seriously. Uh, the role allows him to be a little bit of a because um, well, he's like a chef, you know, slash bounty hunter. He doesn't want to be a bounty hunter anymore. It gives him some vulnerability. Um, it, it, he, he's he's beset upon the entire movie. He, it's like an Abbott and Costello bit with him and. Um, the guy uh, who countered him is Sean something. I can't think of Sean William Scott. Yeah, yeah, Sean William Scott. The two of them together, and I'm always w- ready to hate Sean William Scott in anything. Hey. And this whole this whole movie worked. <laughs> Rosario Dawson, you know, love her. She was great in it. Um, the movie didn't entirely work, but that. But when I saw the rundown, oh, I thought, okay, this guy... Walken disagrees here. You got that. No, nah, Christopher oh, Walken, right? I want, I want my tooth. I want uh, my I, tooth. I want my tooth. <laughs> It's up my ass. <laughs> this uncomfortable hunk of metal. But, um, <laughs> so I came away from the rundown thing. Okay, I'll give this guy a chance. And then he was in um, Be Cool a couple of years later, which his performance was great. And I, honestly, looking at his um, 
uh, resume since then? I don't know. You know, I, I don't. But you know, it's fine. He's making more money than I am, so whatever. <laughs> That's very well said. Right. Yeah. Hitting on that point, a uh, friend of the show and awesome B movie critic uh, Matt Poirier of Director Video Connoisseur, uh, I think, has stated it best that The Rock has this just rare sense of charisma and transition to different uh, careers. And I think right now he is stuck in the limbo that is uh, financial security. He's just taking anything he can get his hands on versus whether he should actually be in it right now. I think, I think he's, I think he's winking at us the whole time while he's doing San Andreas and skyscraper, just the way Arnold, just the way Arnold did when he was, when he did commando and you know, he definitely um, is. He raw, raw deal, just winking at us saying, yeah, this is what I'm doing. You love me. You know, it's all—it's just—it's all charisma. It's not Pretty like acting. it's not acting chops. It's not deep, meaningful scripts. It's just you know him kicking ass or flying a helicopter, or dragging people out of a canyon. You know what I mean? It's just yeah. it's, that. That's very well said. And like you guys, I kind of, you know, I got. I think for a while he kind of struggled with his identity at first. It was like, okay, is he Roddy Piper? Is he Dolph Lundgren? Is he the next Vin Diesel or Jason Statham type guy? Because those guys are doing cult movies like Triple X and Transporter. And here he has, you know, Rundown and Scorpion King. And I think what was really unique about him is just, I would just always sit. He was just always willing to just try out a new formula. He, he, just, he just had a sense of fearlessness. And I think everyone just responded to that. Cause how could you not? It just is like, Whoa, okay. You know, he's doing this stupid kids movie, but he's having fun doing it. Or if he isn't, he's not showing it. And now he's doing all these gritty movies. Now he's doing all these again, like be cool. was just as like, and get smart. I just saw th- him in those. I was like, man, I, he should be on SNL. And then, then he was, you know, as Barack, yeah. Barack Obama. And I was just like, <laughs> Oh, that's a hysterical skit. And, and just, I would see him, I would flip through the channels and I would just come across just rare interviews with him, like when he was promoting Doom on Jay Leno, when he was on E, just talking about how he got his tattoos. And it was just like, man, I, this guy just is so down to earth. I can't, you know, not to judge, but I can't believe he was a wrestler. I can't even believe that he's an actor. He just, he just is like a chameleon. He just blends in with whatever the hell he wants. And, so then, he's got yeah. he's got oodles of charisma. That's really oh, what he's yeah. saying. And I, you get the impression he doesn't really take it too seriously. He knows what he is. Yeah, that's know? the that's the that's the Arnold thing because Arnold exactly. was like that. Ar- Arnold never took himself as seriously as like Stallone and Seagal did. Like Arnold was very much winking at himself, especially with something like a uh, Last Action Hero, where he's just completely taking the piss out of himself in the movies he makes. And uh, the, the 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 Rock is kind of the same way, you know. Uh, you, you could tell he's just like, you know, it compared to like, you know, somebody who be, who's become his chief rival now, which is Vin Diesel, who takes himself extremely <laughs> seriously. Right, way to the point of way unpleasantness. Yeah. yeah, to the and point where it's like, dude, re- fucking relax, dude. You know, and it's I, true. I, like, Stallone true. and Arnold didn't hate each other. They just played right. up the rivalry for fans and, you yeah. know, the can't, same can't be said for, you know, Vin Diesel, Statham, and The Rock, where The Rock and Statham were like, hey, we got egos, but we get along compared to this fucker named Vin who we just want to punch in the face. <laughs> He's obnoxious. Right. Let's go our separate ways. And so it, that is a very good point in that basically, you know, Arnold just was seeing just kind of the annoying side of Hollywood. Like he wasn't getting along with producers like Dino De Laurentiis. He was seeing how Joel Silver acted. And then he was just trying to form his own identity and you know van damme he's like man i want to be an actor but i'm not getting any serious stuff so i gotta accept that i am the blood sport you know awesome dude and (laughs) and yeah uh, arnold was kind of just taking whatever he could chew on and like you say just kind of just like well it's that kind of movie so we're gonna have fun well when you have fun i get to smoke cuban cigars and uh go bathe in the wild it's awesome and and, you know and like you say the rock kind of he he had so many, you know, just depression, personal tragedy. He had already tried to measure up like his wrestler dad. And so I think he was having to take multiple challenges. And I think he was just having to see, you know, which of the targets he had to actually make sure to shoot first before he could get through whatever other maze that was coming his way. And I, I think you guys have all very well stated how he 
was just a very down to earth guy. And he had, uh, you know, after not getting along with a few directors on a few earlier films, we'll get into that later. Uh, I think he also learned that, you know, you also have to be a team player. You have to just, uh, you know, not bring the set down because you're just having creative differences. And I think that's just why no one's has really had, I haven't heard too many terror stories involving him. I think he also just learned, Hey, you know, a little courtesy goes a long way. Mm -hmm. And I mean, yeah. how, how long do you want to be in this industry? Cause you got to keep thinking about tomorrow. <laughs> that's right. That's, 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 a, that's exactly, sorry really to cut you off. Uh, that's exactly what drove the wedge between him and, and Vin was that he was trying to be a team player and, you know, like, Hey, let's just all come together, you know, all be awesome in this movie. And Vin kind of is like, uh, well, this is my show. It's all about me. You know, I, I don't, I don't want to make it seem like I, uh, I hate Vin Diesel. I don't. Vin's I, I done think... some good movies, but no, yeah, no, was... Vin, Vin has, but like, like, like we said, he, his ego is, is massive. And he it takes himself way too soon. Yeah. Yeah. It, <laughs> it really does. Like, like, like a lot of them Fast and Furious movies have become the fucking Vin Diesel show. The family. In my yeah. family. But what's even funnier is Statham, I mean, he, his ego shows on screen, but you kind of just like the snarkiness of it because he gets to work it into the one-liners and before jumping off a building or yeah. punching mm -hmm. someone in the face. And so, like you say, is like, I think Vin, after when he wasn't doing Riddick, just kind of felt like, you know, everything I'm doing, you know, I must you know, have the final say. Otherwise, I don't want to be a part of this shit after right. being paid millions of dollars. And I think The Rock was just finding is like, okay, you know, this wasn't my franchise. I'm, I'm just a featured guest star. I got to keep reinventing myself because I've just fired my agent after the Tooth Fairy and <laughs> Master's uh, yeah. Underground hit. And I need to just keep blazing. You know, <laughs> I, I got to keep these tires on this race car and I got to keep driving be until I find what I want. <laughs> Here's the thing with Vin Diesel that I've always said for every he rem, remember he made that movie with Sidney Lumet. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Uh, find me, find guilty. me guilty. Find me guilty. And every and he and I think a lot of people thought it's Sidney Lumet. He's going to do well. You know, this is going to be this is going to be, you know, something we can find. I watched the movie and for all I love about Sidney Lumet, Vin Diesel just was like, Ugh, you know, I don't think it was that good. And, and that's the thing. Vin Diesel is trying to be Stallone. Yeah. I think he did all right, but I see what you mean, where it was kind of... He, I, I, I did sense a little creative differences behind the scenes because there's a lot of uh, jump cuts and montages. Yeah. Yeah, again, that's the phone going off. Sorry, guys. But, like, you got to realize he's trying to be like Stallone because, remember, Stallone did Paradise Sally and mm -hmm. Fist after Rocky, and you know how they yeah. went. Yeah. Yeah, so, Fist, Fist is definitely a good comparison into something like find me guilty where it's like he's trying to be like the oscar caliber actor and it's just it, no dude no he's working no. with norman jewison and it just feels like there's just too many cooks in the kitchen and mm -hmm. it is i mean you even find that with a uh, victory i forget who did that i think it was like roger donaldson or that's a good yeah that's a good example yeah. right and i, uh, and I yeah. want i want to love that movie victory i want to it's love a very it. inspirational story and it yet tries I just... so hard and, it, and at the end it's like stallone it's like ugh. You want to watch a prison movie with Stallone? Just watch Lockout. But yeah, it's just <laughs> lock up. I think lock up. My bad. I'm. I think the difference between uh, different Stallone, awesome Stallone, and The Rock at this point is The Rock is listening to his agent's advice. Where I think Who like happens to be his ex-wife. So yeah, yeah. that's right. That's and where Stallone was like, no, I'm bigger than that. I could. And, and the agent, and you know, The Rock's agent, no, you know, we'll do some kiddie movies. We're gonna ease you into this shit. Where Stallone just thought he was going to do King Lear, you know, right away, and yes, it, it right, just didn't. Right. It just didn't work. We'll feel you. On my <laughs> 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 oh, oh, like, I'm the law. I'm the king. <laughs> no, Robin Williams used to do this joke. Stallone, Stallone does Hamlet. You know, to be or what, you know. Oh, so, I would so yeah, watch him do Hamlet again. I would so do it. Oh, no, but... no. Schwarzenegger's Hamlet is the best Hamlet. That's what I said. <laughs> oh, that's okay. Weird. Yeah, I mean, the Last Action Hero is by far the best Shakespeare adaptation. There is no, no doubt. Oh, absolutely. I would watch that a million fucking times if it was real. I mean, I, I mean, sure, you got Sean Connery as Macbeth, but I mean, Arnold is just, you know, Hamlet. I mean, Jesus, I mean, just, that 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 would just work. 
I, I think I think that was like kind of him like taking the piss out of something like Stallone. Like Stallone probably sees himself doing like Hamlet and doing it seriously, and Arnold's just like, get the fuck out of here. Especially <laughs> after Demolition <laughs> Man, where they're like, oh no, Arnold's president. That can't yeah. be good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They, they were definitely taking the piss out of each other at, at that time and shit, just having fun, making fun of each other. And yet Bruce Willis stayed the course and kept having 50-50 results. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, Bruce Willis is an interesting example. Sort of, he he always tread that sort of middle ground. Like he doesn't it's take kind of like Clint Eastwood, where he's like, okay, I'll get the uh, tearjerker drama, and now I got to do the movie where I try and run away from some crooked hitman or cops or politicians, and I let out a one-liner because I just can't escape the John McClane stereotype. See, the, the, if if I may interject about Bruce Willis, Bruce Willis, you could tell, like he like you know he got became a massive star after Die Hard, but like he wanted to maintain like you know I'm not just an action guy you know I was right. just I was just thrown into action guy role but that's not really me like you know so he always tried to do things you know outside of that you know oh, he, he tried Hudson Hawk Hudson Hawk mm-hmm. which unfortunately bombed but uh, I I will, I will die in the hill that Hudson Hawk is a great fucking movie. Um, I've always Juan liked Fox. it and yeah. I've always I... been <laughs> shot at verbally uh, by oh, a yeah, yeah. firing squad. It, it's just it, it's, <laughs> it is it is the battlefield earth of his resume where everyone loves to hate it and it's just like but have you actually seen it? I mean yeah yeah have you actually paid attention to it? You know uh, he also bonfire the vanities you know. Uh, but like you know, it was always he always found himself having to go back to those action roles where it's just like you know I got I got a family to feed, dude. You know, I, I absolutely. Need to check well, and, and, and now it's to the point where it's just like you know I I don't give a shit. Fuck it, you know. I'm gonna, <laughs> right. I'm gonna it's all direct these, to video now. Yeah, like where he just cannot care less, you know, about. The I material. think he. Yeah. I think he just got so burned out to, because he was doing so many things where his passion was in it, like. Uh, in country where he played a vietnam vet yeah uh, nightmares and then uh rock the cash Ba, which was everyone was comparing to ishtar i'm like this is actually a fun movie with him and bill murray yeah. and it went unnoticed so i think he got just so stirred up to where he's like you know what fuck everybody they're not gonna see my movies anyway <laughs> and then right. i think and the, he does all the cult fiction yeah. right he took and a pay cut to do that and, and you know, like him and the yeah, no shit and it's like all of a sudden Travolta has the comeback, and everybody's saying, "Hey, wow, he's great!" But if you watch him in Pulp Fiction, he's you know that's that whole sequence of him um, as the boxer Butch. Yeah, it's he's not he's not jumping off of a building. He's not shooting a machine. Well, he does shoot a machine gun, but it's just <laughs> but I know the, what you mean. briefly <laughs> situation, especially with um, what's his name, uh, Bing Rames. Bing Rames, <laughs> and he's just you know you just see him. He comes in. He, he's looking. He's like. No, not the gun. He looks, he sees the samurai sword. He's like, yeah, I'm taking the samurai sword. It's like that way he just, it was, it was that whole, you know, it was like, okay, now Bruce Willis can do the indie stuff now. Absolutely. And he did, he did one movie that I love called The Kid. Oh, yeah. He met his uh, like 10 year old self as a little kid. And I thought that was a great movie that he did. I like that movie, you know, but, yeah. um, for sure, for sure. And I, I think The Rock just had to study all these guys and admire them and wink at them. And he also just knew he had to take even more chances than them, I think. I think that was just the way he was going to man up. And so I'm going to let us just circle around just what his favorite roles are. So I'll let uh, Jonathan just fire away. What, what's the I mean, obviously, we're going to talk about Rundown. I just, I. Is that the one you want to start out with? Or? Yeah, that's what I'm going to start off with, pretty much. Okay. <laughs> I mean, it just it was such a sleeper hit. It, no one just saw it coming. They're like, okay, Peter Berg. Who the fuck is Peter Berg? Oh, he's that dude from Chicago. Oh, he's directing? I Did anyone see really bad things? It's an awesome movie, but any, did anyone see it? You know, And so then you right. see this movie, and, and it's just like, wow, okay, so... You're doing a total tribute to '80s type movies, and, you know, like mm-hmm. The Weapon, Commando, and mm-hmm. you you got the, again Rosario Dawson's stars pulling up. Christopher Walken is in everything that year, and that happens to be one of his better movies that year. And it's just so wild how I think it's just so many just jaw dropping moments. It just was that kind of movie. But uh, what 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 would you say just stands out about his bodyguard for hire? His retriever, so to speak. 
Oh, is that, for, is that a question for me? Yes. Sure. Okay. <laughs> Pretty <laughs> sure. Uh, well, I thought it was interesting. I didn't realize this until I rewatched it a few years ago, is that he actually says in the film that he hates guns. Yeah, yeah, he's a pacifist kind of secretly, so I think that kind of makes him even more interesting instead of just, mm-hmm. you know, I'm an anti-hero, I'm not going to kill you unless I have to. It's like, pretty much then it just gets to the point where it's like, okay, now it's just unavoidable. Now now hold I have to ho- kill Yeah. Ho- hold on, hold on, hold on. Can I interject for a Yeah, 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 thing? no, th- this is all free-for-all, yeah. No, 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 I just wanted to point out that that's, that's a common trope in W. WWE movies is that uh, yeah. where the hero shies away from the guns, you know, and they rather use their fists. Uh-huh. So, so it's a little, it's 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 funny that you know his, his big moment where like you know he has to realize you know the power and that it takes him to, to use guns, you know, and I mean he uses them awesomely. But uh, I always found that like that was you know going outside of uh, what they usually do with like uh, no no guns and like okay he's gonna just grab two shotguns and fuck everybody up you know no that's very true because mm-hmm. i mean even though it was co-produced like that the script writers were creative enough to interject it into the screenplay peter burke had a good sense of humor while having a great stunt team and i i, I oh, think yeah. like, like like you say it's just like that they, they pretty much just do the whole you know save the village the seven samurai type formula and then it it, they just do so many other just outrageous winks, and The Rock is just continually finding himself in a bigger foreign land. And when he's finally, you know, out of the country here, he's basically just having to just conjure up just even more unusual schemes to not only save his own skin, but also just keep the, you know, target that he's here to retrieve alive. But I mean, I was seeing teachers and students talk about it during, you know, uh, junior high, and it was just one of those like, wow, okay everyone knows who the rock is now and it was just kind of electrifying it's like this overnight sensation in a way i mean and it's just so ridiculous how they have talked about a sequel and just no one wants to budge and it's just like what are you waiting for that the everyone has spoken what 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 what, what, do we have to how many dicks do we have to suck i mean it's it's just like good god wow Wow. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm sorry, but it's just like it's just so frustrating. I mean, to have that this much, just like with dread, to have this much adoration of it, and just no one is budging. No one is forking over the uh, finances for it, saying, "Yeah, no, no one remembers that." I'm like, bullshit. It's on cable TV every other month. I <laughs> mean, it's on streaming. It people rank it as like one of his best ones it even made like i think his you know ultimate movie pack at one point it had to have it's just like what why are you not doing a sequel to this it you couldn't possibly fuck it up or do anything even worse than it the formula is already there and you just got to add extra jokes i mean god why do people just not want to make a sequel to this i i, I do not get it it's, Anyway, uh, mm. any other traits about the role that? Mm. I mean, was that one and using the whip? That... Yeah, using the whip, which I love that, especially in the boss scene. Uh, he has to grab it with his bare fist, like, and you're like, "Whoa, okay." <laughs> you know, he he's thinking outside the box on this one. He, <laughs> you know, it it, it basically. Every fight scene in this movie has to outdo the last one. Before you get to all the gunplay and the car chases and explosions, it's like, okay, you know, it's like, now I got another guy, villager, who's, you know, trying to karate chop me, and he's just making me fall over my head Mm -hmm. into the ground. It's like, damn, you know, it's like, so he's not only having to gain everyone's trust, but yeah, he's having to always just say, don't want to fight. Okay, shit. Now I gotta fight. <laughs> yeah. And, and never wimpily either. It's just perfect. And uh, yeah. I don't, uh, JJ or German, do you have any other? Uh, well, say, oh, I'm sorry, JJ. Go. Sorry. I'm gonna say walking tall. Okay. Uh, yeah. Favorite roles that he did. Yeah. Be- I saw the original with our favorite. Beer Showdown Baker. Showdown Baker. 
my uh, my Mitchell. Mitchell. <laughs> um, and I saw the remake, and I gotta say this about the remake: it was very well written. Um, you know, he comes back, and he's it. it it's basically the the Buford P- P- Purser story. They make but, it even more kind of like Roadhouse at times, you know? Yeah, and that's the good thing about it, where Purser's just there going, I got a piece of wood, I'm going to kick your ass, you know, while he's, you know, with his sweaty, you know, stinky shirt on. He comes in, he's like, I'm going to run for sheriff, and I'm going to hire the guy who was a drug addict, Johnny Knoxville. I think he's a drug I don't remember if he was a drug addict or something like that. I think so. He was like an yeah. ex-con, so you got that dilemma. He's got his back, but yeah. at the same time, he can't be seen helping him out because, you know, that looks bad when you're running as sheriff. You know? <laughs> but the great thing about it was the way the character was written, the way they they put him in that situation, the way he protects his family, you know, and the way... You know, it was just, it was just very, I, I think it was, it was a lot better than the original. You know? In many ways. I mean, and it's just so wild how for a while it seemed like he had to have a villain that would overact in his movies. And, you know, Neil McDonald was no exception. He's definitely yeah. tied with Christopher Walken as best villain of the rocks filmography. Cause it's just like, man, okay. Mm-hmm. That, you know, not only does this guy choose scenery, but I mean, he's flat out having to just flat out say, no, man, this is my town. I own you. I own the casinos. So they own you. It goes into your pocket one way or the other. You're always frequenting them. <laughs> he's having to just flat out, uh, you know, continually up the stakes, have his men rough him up after he, you know, breaks the bad guy's uh, car lights, <laughs> yeah. gives him a ticket. I love that scene. My favorite scene is um, they take apart him and Johnny Knoxville take apart the truck. Yeah. Trying to look for, I think they were trying to look for drugs. I'm, I'm like still a little hazy, but it's like, they're trying to look for drugs. And the whole scene is just the guy going like, just like staring there, like taking apart his truck and Knox was going, nope, still not there anything. You think we should go deeper? Yeah, let's go deeper. And they start taking more stuff apart. But the way, I mean, you, you're rooting for this guy to beat the, to just get the, the, the Norm, the uh, Chris, who was it again? The bad guy? Uh, no, no, McDonald. But... Or is it Chris? Was it Nor- no, it's not Norm McDonald. I, I said Neil McDonald. Neil yeah. McDonald. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What- yeah Neil. Add Neil McDonald in the end, which he does. You know, and that's the great thing about when he just like you know he just beats the crap out of him, takes apart the entire casino and everything like that. Yeah, he's that- made sure that he's run out of bullets, and he's like, okay, no, I'm not gonna even whip you with a piece of wood this time you know no we're gonna fucking box i'm gonna throw you down the shaft and i'm gonna fucking wrestle you (laughs) and that's what made that's what i like about that movie it's 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 not really like in his you know the best known in his canon because it was a remake and a lot of people may remember the you know the original but it's and then they did the whole based on a true story for that one as well and i'm like okay Just like the original, it was loosely inspired by some town bully scandal. But come on, you know, it's it, it's just marketing. You don't got to take it that part of yeah. the marketing serious. You can just it really is a lot of fun. And I've seen some people call it the lamest thing they've seen. I think they're drinking a different kind of Kool Aid. Yeah, <laughs> honestly, yeah. And I, I, that's what I like about it. And I didn't realize uh, Kevin Bray directed it. And uh, it says a lot. The movie turned out really well because apparently in the commentary track, uh, Bray was reported as saying he and Dwayne did not get along at all. Yeah. And that was says a lot because that was like his third, fourth movie or something, you know, after yeah. doing some bit part extra stuff. And so, uh, I mean, it was cool that not much of that leaked out, but I think he definitely learned his lesson from there. He's like, okay, uh, when you're doing all this negotiation, you got to see eye to eye with the director before you even start this whole thing and um yeah very very well said uh so german i'll let you plow away at a, another role that you like from him well i have to say um after the rundown this is maybe kind of embarrassing but i really enjoyed race to witch mountain because yeah. it came, it, well because when it came out my daughter was um like 10 so it kind of it was like the it, it it was the perfect film for us to watch together, and that was back when that um, Anna Sophia Robb was like all the rage. Her career was really blown up at that yeah, time. She, yeah, she was in everything back then. And she, she's a great actress. 
so that movie was a lot of fun, and I and I respected it too because it cast um, Ike uh, Eisenman, uh, who was in the original Witch Mountain, um, which I loved as a kid. So a little bit of a nostalgia, but that was the, another perfect role for him. He's like the you know this cab driver, every man who's like thrust into a situation he doesn't fully understand. It, it was the whole movie wasn't about him. It was it allowed his charisma, his sort of fish out of water. Kind of like the rundown where, you know, like we said, he doesn't want to use guns, but you know, at the end, he's going to use guns. That's he, a good does, point, because compared to the other kids movies he did, it, it's definitely a more laid back kind of adventure movie. It's not trying to be very, you know. I think where we struggled with G.I. Joe and Journey to the Mysterious Island was he was having to one up a cast that he was kind of replacing. And, you know, with that one, you know much like walking tall it was a remake but it was a different style and it was just a simple straight going popcorn movie and so he's definitely like you say embracing that popcorn side by that point it's like just, yeah okay. it's very much a, but his character got a little bit of depth wasn't there some plot point in the movie like he was running from something in his past that's why he was a cab driver i, I think, think they, so i think that touched upon it briefly but it, but the whole movie wasn't about him which yeah. i think it worked um so Heavily yeah, that so yeah, race it's... to which mountain I enjoyed uh, quite a bit. Very well said. I'm gonna go with uh, basically um, rule four, which is uh, ballers. I, I mean, I can't see this show working without him. It was that kind of of a show, you know. And I think what was really cool was just seeing him just really dive into it just get give some really inspirational speeches you know as this guy who's you know a sports agent he gets all the f football players who are, who are misbehaving out of a tough jam and and, and you know peter berg was even co-producing the show but it was interesting how he kind of just really approaches it he has his own uh miss things to have to deal with uh crappy girlfriends uh afraid that he might have some kind of fracture in his skull and it turns out he doesn't but he's actually just afraid of the unknown i've actually only seen the first season this was like a five season run but <coughs> it, it was one of those where he couldn't even decide if he wanted to continue with it because he was just so busy doing that back to back with movies but i mean it, it's definitely worth watching because i mean even if you're not a sports guy, it's just a, has a good sense of humor. And he definitely carries a lot of the outrageous moments throughout the show when he's like, whoa, 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 whoa. let me speak for you, buddy. <laughs> and um, I, I think, again, that the team player just factor really works in roles, many of his roles. And this is one of them. And that's why I recommend that one. Hmm. So, uh, Rob, are you still with us? <laughs> yeah, I'm here. Okay, I'll I'll let you uh, fling away another um, role. I'm 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 gonna go with uh, probably an unpopular one. Uh, unfortunately, I'm gonna go with faster. Oh, I think everyone loves faster, but you never yeah, know. like no, like yeah, you, you'd be surprised, like you know. And here's here's the thing: the uh, faster illustrates. Um, I wanted to use faster to to jump off on a issue that I have with Dwayne Johnson is that. Uh, you know, it, it it's it's weird that, I mean, it's not weird. I I completely understand why, but uh, he's while I, I enjoy his movies, he feels like it feels like he's playing it safe with a lot of his roles. Yes, you know, yes. a lot of the stuff he's doing, those big budget blockbuster stuff, and I I think a lot of it has to do with the failure of Faster because that was him trying to branch out and doing gritty R rated. So emotional, action. yeah, yeah. Are like you know like really just throwback to like those seventies hardcore thrillers, vigilante movies, uh, you know just updated for modern times. And it, it, it's weird because a lot of people say like you know they wish he would do more roles like that, myself included. Like I want to see more. I want to see more R-rated action stuff. I want to see him take a chance and mm -hmm. doing stuff like a you man know, man on fire type tell. And like yeah. you say, I I would see occasionally yeah. some people diss how oh it's. Not so much about the revenge. I'm like, you're right. It's a original crime storyline with yeah. revenge in it. I mean, exactly. Like people it's, are it's, just impatient. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, and it, you know, you want to see more roles like that. You should have took 
your ass to the theater to see faster, you know. So, I would even mention it to people, and they're like, I haven't seen that one. Is that one of the Fast and Furious movies? I'm like, no, damn it. This is before he did Fast and Furious. Right, like, that was definitely him, like, you know, because he had done, you know, uh, was it the game plan, the Tooth Fairy, and he, That's you know, when he fired his agent. Yeah, that's when he fired his agent because they were like, yeah, you got to do more stuff like this. And he was like, I don't want to do this stuff anymore. You know, I wanted, you know, I, I like doing action stuff. I like doing this kind of stuff. So that's what I want to do. And that was when he did Faster, you know, him trying to break out of that, you know, really put him in a hardcore R-rated film. He's he's blowing dude's brains out, you know, walking right up to him. Blow, you know, brains all over the place. dead pedophile makes you instantly yeah. my hero. Yeah, yeah. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Kill all those motherfuckers. Um, and the detectives are trying to figure it out. Is like, is this guy a former cop? Is he a right? Did they rob him? Why is he just randomly just killing all these people who have no correspondence? Is like, oh, but they do. <laughs> right. And and it it seemed like obviously the failure of that was just like okay, like you know maybe that was wrong for me to do that and. uh I, I you know these PG thirteen roles like and I and I like a lot of them. I, I'm not, not gonna sit there and pretend I don't. Uh, I like I like PG-13 a lot of those. PG thirteen is great. And yeah, you do the typical where the studio just says, "Oh, yeah. let's edit it down." I'm like, no, leave it as it is. Yes, <laughs> right, right. You know, and like he's just focused on you know making IPs at this moment. You know, like make a make a blockbuster like. Uh, uh, popular enough, we get a sequel, and we got franchises, and you know, keep keep the Dwayne Johnson machine going for years and years and years. And it's like, I I just wish, like, I, I feel at this point he's successful enough he could take more chances, like faster again. You know, he doesn't Please. have to keep he, he doesn't have to keep relying on doing stuff like more Jumanji sequels or more uh, what's that Jungle Cruise that he has uh, coming oh out. God. Oh my god, yeah. I know, I saw oh that, and I was like, god. oh really? Oh my god. Yeah. Is that even coming out? Because yeah, I yeah. thought it was coming out. Yeah, yeah. It got pushed back due to uh, Corona. Uh-huh. Um, it was supposed to come out last year. And push back. I, I, I haven't seen a date, uh, a date <laughs> for it to release. It was one that they, they push it back and they just, you know, they just sitting on it for whatever. Uh-huh. Um, but, so uh, we're just going to get I, a bunch of movies now based on old Disney rides and they're going to try to, you know, hopefully some shit will stick to the wall at some yeah, point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pirates of the Caribbean. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It, it's, it's all part. Pirates of uh, the, the Caribbean's fault, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Now, now they, you know, they they want to do all that stuff. But they're gonna I, do like a they're gonna do like a teacups ride movie next. You know, it'll be it'll be <laughs> oh, great. Thank you on that. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Most, most definitely. But yeah, the uh, faster for me. The I, I just wish I'd see more hardcore R-rated stuff from him. Like I, I feel like you know, even though we we talked about Walking Tall and the Rundown and this, um, I feel like it, like those are his probably his most popular movies amongst his like his his fans from back in the day because they continually bring this stuff up uh you know his you know his new age fans lo- love yeah. all this stuff but like you know his fans from from day one they they love you know run down and walking tall and, and all that stuff and he knows they it, love it and at what, the same time i mean it just seems like he has to just keep doing something different right because that's his brand Right. You know, like he he's he's just, you know, he's just really concentrated on putting the asses in the seats and it's like, dude, you 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 you're more than successful enough that you could give us like a a low budget. Like I I'm I'm still sure like maybe one day we'll get that commando-esque role from him, you know, that classic movie of action from him. Even on aliens or the thing type role. I'm sure he would be given some kind of movie that would just be just mm-hmm. so over the top and outrageous. Yeah, and he would excel at it. You know, he's just playing it safe. I get it, but I just wish he'd take more chances, like faster. But yeah, faster for me. Mm-hmm. Okay, perfect. Um, I'm gonna just run into role number six. Uh, what did we think of Snitch? Oh yeah, Snitch is good. I and like it's just interesting how mm-hmm. it's just like yeah, the plot is basic, but that's okay. That just gives him a lot to just kind of play into the emotion. I've never seen anyone give that kind of performance with a you know uh uh, just telling their uh criminal son that you know you are not going to get beat up or raped in prison i'm going to get you out of there um i think it's what's even more interesting is just how he has to become something he's not he used to mess with you know drug type stuff and now he has to actually become it and 
just to make sure his son doesn't become a target in prison. It's like that. So it's just a very basic stakes just driven through the heart. And uh, I was fortunate enough to see that in the theater and that, that card in car chase definitely looked good. In that yeah. giant I, I think of this, 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 the, the the success of that one, you know, as far as the film uh, could be a lot, like, because he's great in the movie. He's really, I, I'm, I'm pr- pretty sure that's probably is, is what I consider his best performance is uh, in Snitch. Um, but also, I think a lot of it has to do with uh, Rick Roman Wall, who directed it. Mm-hmm. Uh, Rick Roman Wall is, mm-hmm. is a fantastic Bell filmmaker. And uh, shot collar. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah, those are excellent movies, and uh, he's really excelling at uh, being a. Uh, at, at this moment, uh, Gerard Butler's go-to guy. Yes. Um, yes. The, uh, he did uh, Angel Has Fallen and Greenland, which I we just recently watched uh, not too long ago. And it's a fantastic fucking movie. Very uh, nice. Yeah. And I, it's Rick Roman Wall seems to bring out the best out of his lead actors, you know, because he definitely should bring in the best out of Gerard Butler. And he damn sure brought the best out of Dwayne Johnson. So he I think brought he brought the best he, out in Val Kilmer and Steven Dorff. Damn. Oh, yeah. Yeah, most definitely. Most, yeah, absolutely. I mean, that, that's definitely. How do you do that? Stephen <laughs> Dorff. I, I, I was considered a uh, felon to be Stephen Dorff's best performance. You know, like, I, I think he's fantastic in that. But yeah, Rick Roman Wall deserves a lot of credit for how good uh, Snitch is. Yeah, by, by all means. I mean, mm-hmm. and you can just see t- material like this happening where you got to just like every lawyer has ignored your advice. Uh, and your son has just made a careless mistake, and it's like, okay, what do I got to do? You know, uh, I, I, and you can just buy into it just with the ex-con happens to be at the construction company he owns. So it's like, okay, which one of you guys has a connection to one of these guys? <laughs> <laughs> so it's an interesting lineup. Um, uh, JJ, I'll let you jump in. <laughs> All right. Uh, I got to go with the gratuitous role that. Made him big, uh, the Scorpion King. Oh, yeah. Okay, now, this oh, was yeah. this was his Conan the Barbarian, much as Arnold had Conan before, you know, in 81. Um, I stay you know, alone! <laughs> you murdered my family! <laughs> you took my father's sword! Um, this, this Crumb! Was, <laughs> Crumb, Crumb laughs at your four winds. Um, <laughs> I have that memor. I have all his lines memorized. Lamentation like- of the women. <laughs> yo, oh, uh, I love uh, that line. Yo, yo, a, a little tangent. Um, I went to a 30th anniversary screening of Commando, oh, and yeah. uh, they they had a they had a, a a contest where they were giving away like um Commando figurines and stuff. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> I, I I went down there and I participated in that and I actually won. One of the figurines by doing the the lamentation of the women speech from uh, <laughs> the barbarian. And, uh, and I need wow. to hear it. I need to hear the whole thing. I need to hear it. <laughs> Crush your enemies. See them driven before you. And hear the lamentation of the women. And uh, the crowd was oh, like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah." He wins. The crowd was like, "Yeah, he wins." So <laughs> he that, is that, clearly how... a bigger fan than any of us. <laughs> <laughs> oh, are you kidding? That movie. I my favorite part of that movie is when he get when uh, James Earl Jones is going. You know what the riddle of steel is, don't oh, you, boy? Oh, that's a great James Earl Jones. Do you see that girl? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come, and you guys are child. good. Come, boom! She comes falls and says, "You see, that is strength. That is power." <laughs> <laughs> Let him ponder this. Oh man! Oh, Whoa! Crucible. Just the most outrageous. Just like, why? How did you defeat me before he gets, you know, sliced and diced? <laughs> yeah. But the thing I love about the Scorpion King is that it, it's it, it's an old school sword and sandal movie. That's the way I feel about it. It should have been R, but there's still so much just there's, over the was, top moments that is like, how can you just yeah. not enjoy this? So. And it's not only that, but you got to realize like they get Bernard Hill who had just der- done Lord of the Rings. The yeah, I know the creator Gunpowder. Yeah, and uh, who else? Boom, was boom, Rico. Uh, what's his name who works with uh freaking George Clooney and everything? Uh, Kelly, who, yeah, oh, yeah. and oh, at, when The Rock hosted the Taurus World Stunt Awards, he ended up introducing her there. And he's like, My scorpion queen herself, Kelly, who, <laughs> and our, our, our favorite uh 
Wiley Winnebago, Winnebago driving uh, sidekick <laughs> to Richmond. Who, I, I, I always connect with Angel's Revenge. If anybody's seen Mystery Science Theater, oh my they God. put a food additive in their thing and they become the cast of uh, Renegade. So Brant's oh, that's <laughs> right. is that's in that right. movie. Yes. And I told my I told my wife when we saw him I'm like, hey, I know that guy. He's I always see him in every movie. I remember him being in the Chicken Chronicles when I was a kid. My and God. I'm like, yeah, with uh, Steve Gutenberg, and he's in that movie. And Ralph Muller's in that movie. Movie, Peter Fassbender. Yeah. Uh, uh, oh, the, oh, uh, what's his name? Uh, Adani Marapis. That's right from uh, Mortal Kombat Conquest yeah. and Twenty Four is there, and hey, he gets a great stab death. <laughs> but. Um, it, yeah, I, I mean, it's just so out of this world. I mean, Michael it, Clark Duncan. Yeah. I mean, damn. And the th- the thing I love about it was it was like it was like okay, like I have to like if you're looking at the comparisons between where Arnold and The Rock start, it's doing a uh, an action movie as a mythical figure. Now, a lot of people don't realize though, Arnold had a movie in 1970 called Hercules in New York. Oh, oh yeah, which, oh, yeah, a classic. Which I and I've watched the undubbed version. And I've, oh, oh wow, that, that's that's oh, the oh, wow. that's that's the that's the uh, only way to go is the Lip. undubbed version because uh <laughs> that uh, it it uh, Arnold Arnold uh, his his accent never loses its its comedic appeal. No, so, oh, uh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I didn't know when, there when, was one. I thought he dubbed it in afterwards or someone else. No, did the, hi, no. I am Hercules. No, like uh, he he was definitely dubbed that for, but uh, they do yeah. have the undubbed version. That's the uh, only for, way to go. Where he That's goes, uh, man, I'm not Hercules. I am Hercules. <laughs> yes. No, no. Uh, when uh uh the the cab driver tries to attack him for not paying, he's like, how dare you touch Hercules? <laughs> that's right. The only part that's dubbed in oh, that version man. is when he speaks to Arnold Stang through the radio. Yeah, at the end. Yeah, at the end. Uh, but, how, are we, how are we forgetting the bear fight? Oh, the bear fight. oh yeah. <laughs> I mean, Tommy the bear was fight so is wishes he had done something that brilliant. I mean, no, my yeah. favorite, is, my favorite is he loses his strength and Zeus sends in Samson, and I'm like, Samson's from the Bible. What the heck is he doing? All right? This is like <laughs> someone. Oh, here, comes and here comes Atlas. I'm like, I Samson. guess whoever the maybe that was part of the financing is like yeah. uh, you, you got to treat. A Greek mythology, like it's an actual Bible. Otherwise, we're not going to fund your. We're going to go with Luke. Put we're Samson go, in. Right. <laughs> Otherwise, we're going to fire Arnold and go with Luke Ferrigno instead. Oh wait, they did later yeah. on. Oh yeah, yeah. But that's the thing. That's the thing. It's like he starts out playing a mythic character in the Scorpion King. Thank God he only made one, because they made I think two or three more after it, and it was. It was Should have totally weird. been in all those direct video sequels. Because I'm yeah. sorry, I was as I was telling Jonathan Mark when we were covering that saga. I just mm-hmm. love the one where he, Victor Webster, just comes on in. He crushes Lou Ferrigno in an extended cameo. He beats he cr- he breaks Don the Dragon Wilson's neck, and then he encounters all these various henchmen who are off duty eating, and he just goes, "Hey." who's hungry and just whips a total just tabletop full of just giant chicken wings and everything and just crushes a bunch of people underneath it. <laughs> you got it. That's the second one? Uh, no. The fifth one. No, no. no the the fifth one, one, uh, one. The, the Victor Webster's not in the fifth one. Four, fourth one. My bad. Yeah, yeah. Oh, there's a the fifth one. Jeez. Ooh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm just I, didn't, I didn't know there was a third one. Yeah. <laughs> that one is Vic, Victor Any Webster one. didn't even return for the fifth one. He said, fuck this. I'm out of here. <laughs> yeah. I got a great hit show that everyone's watching called Continue. Oh, yeah. Hey, well. Yeah, no, uh, very well configured. I mean, he, he is, I don't know if his acting was quite there yet, but I mean, he definitely knew he was the right kind of guy to get for that thing. Cause I mean, he said in multiple interviews, even on the official website during the promos, how he's like, it wasn't any, even though WWE was the co-founder of the movie, it wasn't any different. It was the same thing, just rehearse with the stunt guys and actors, you know, make sure everyone gets it, and then just work on the, you know, one-liners afterwards. And I think Chuck Russell was a good connection. I mean, you know, this mm-hmm. guy behind Nightmare Free, you know, Eraser, Blob, remakes. Yeah. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah, the blob, he, yes. It, he just had that campy appeal, and he's like, hey, man, we're just having fun. Who gives a shit? And it's like, yeah, well, that's just exactly it, you know? And it's no different than Deathstalker or Beastmaster. Just let's have fun. And, it's 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 in the category of not going to win any Oscars, but it's a good movie to watch. You know, are you kidding? Yeah. That yeah. set design yeah. was amazing. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> and and you know what's really cool about that though? When you watch it, um, the thing is, is that when you watch it, if you've seen The Mummy Returns, and you see what's going, you see how the character is going to evolve from this heroic character, this villain. And that's what makes that's what makes it such a good thing. So if you watch the Scorpion King and then you watch the Mummy, and then you watch the or you watch it like in a certain chronological order, you know it makes it makes you know, how can you know, how can this guy turn into such an evil evil thing? You know, mm-hmm. he was just always being beat up. He's the he's basically a he should technically be a king by this point. Yeah, especially you don't even realize in the first one he literally has no problem literally taking down that uh, evil warlord's entire bodyguards who are even you know five times as big as him and i mean he even headbutts one of them <laughs> and and uh, no, I, I like i like the part in there where uh he's with the kid he said like, you kill one half i'll kill the other and the kid's looking at him like right? what and he's like uh well you go over there i'll kill them all right <laughs> <laughs> it's just and i mean this i mean i think everyone loves to shit on this movie now and i i to me it really did kind of, I, I saw it after I saw Run Down, and me and my uncle were both just like, oh, two giant ass thumbs up. I mean, this yeah, this is a Saturday morning movie, maybe a Sunday morning movie. It You have to be in the mood, but I mean, this was a blueprint for The Rock. This had to be where he said, okay, mm-hmm. this is what the fuck I'm doing the rest of my career. Even if it's a serious drama, even if it's a bizarre movie that isn't even an action movie, you know, it. this is what I'm doing. I mean... On the rock. So, um, uh, John, tell us about Doom. <laughs> ah, you read my mind. That was what I was going to choose. This movie would not exist without him. I'm sorry. It's just like he going all universal soldier. Yeah. And just, um, he's he's uh, definitely the best thing about that movie. Sergeant Barnes and Platoon. Yeah. And I mean, I remember watching it. I, I was fucking bored the first time. I was like, this is worse than some of the lesser Highlanders. And then I resaw it. I'm like, you know what? I am absolutely wrong. This is so bad. It's good. This is great. This is, uh, I mean, just seeing, I'll sum it up with the one line. And I mean, this is written by future Expendables writer Dave Calligan, where he's getting uh, mm-hmm. uh, away by the zombies and infected. And he's like, I'm the sergeant. I'm not supposed to die. <laughs> <laughs> That, that that line made the movie, and I, if you have problems with this movie, just fast forward to the second half where it goes all Star Trek aliens and Predator. Just have fun with that part. Just... Oh yeah, oh. It's the same, pretty much the second half, right? And Carl Urban, I would say. Yeah, Carl is. I mean, I would not be surprised if that's how he got the role of Bones. Was someone saw that movie and said, "Hey." I know of a spice a sci-fi movie reboot we're doing. Who was that guy who was in Doom? Hmm. Reaper. I mean, you gotta love a name like that, Reaper. Oh yeah. I'm the Reaper. I mean, what they should have done is they totally should have just done a sequel where he realizes he's half infected or something, or has to fight an evil clone of himself or some shit. They could have totally gone that route, but ah, <sighs> Universal. What's got wrong? What's wrong with you? Um. Oh, and wow. I was just looking on the theater with the rock. So really, oh, was, nice. yeah, it was. How how was that first person shooter sequence? That was definitely interesting to watch in a theater. I, I'm Wait, sure. Right. I'm sure Clint Mansell's and Trent Reznor's score was the bomb. Oh yeah. yeah. Would you know what you fucking I enjoy that scene. I know a lot of people hate that, but I actually have fun with that scene. Yeah, that, that 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 scene that scene is boss. I mean, it's hot. It was made for TNT Saturday mornings. Had to. Um, uh, does that, anyone want to comment on Central Intelligence? Funny movie. <laughs> yeah, that's one I actually don't mind with him and Kevin Hart. 
And see, Kevin Hart's kind of another one where he's like he he can, be, he can be doing Eddie Murphy type roles, and right now he's kind of just playing it safe, even just co-starring a lot with The Rock now. But I think it's let, let, let's bring up the counseling scene. <laughs> <laughs> the Rock disguises himself as the counselor. <laughs> ah, yes. <laughs> you gotta let your emotions out, man. <laughs> it's gonna eat you up. Uh, to me, I think you know, even though I saw the New Line Cinema symbol right in front of me just what made this be more than just a stupid rush hour type movie i think was just how it kind of was playing on the it was making fun of true lies type movies instead of trying to be just like true lies at one point they're like well i mean hey you know they, they snuck as much naughty language as they could in there and i mean they even said it's like this idiot thinks he's jason born he ain't <laughs> jason born <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, the the club scene is kind of cool because it doesn't even go the typical way you expect it to go. Doesn't he bash someone over the head with a bottle, but it's like at the most unexpected moment or some shit like that? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> My memory's not totally d- brain dead. All right. Um, any other thoughts other than him having to try and outdo Aaron Paul outdoing his Breaking Bad persona? Nah, that's pretty much right. sums it up on that one. All right. Um, let's talk about Rampage. Yeah. Yeah. I wanted to bring up Rampage. Rampage. Um, I, I, I think uh, out of all the you know the the blockbuster movies he's doing, that's probably my favorite one. Is Rampage. I'm just was... a you know, I'm just a sucker for kaiju movies. Absolutely, you know? it was making yeah. fun of that. All I was missing was a. Uh, Cthulhu or some other crazy thing, but yeah, just having all these Gamera, Godzilla type monsters, and even Planet of the Apes and aliens type moments. He's talking to these guys like it's fucking Congo. It's just, it's just awesome sauce. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, don't kill. <laughs> oh, that's mm. great. yeah, I, I I got nothing but praise for that one. That just. And it was just so funny seeing him go on Twitter saying, finally, I'm in a good video game movie or some shit like that. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, um, yeah, that one's a lot of fun. Uh, I don't, I, I like that one a lot, you know, compared to like something like... Uh, they even have uh, the Sky... arcade game in there. Yeah. It's compared to some like, uh, wait, uh, the same year, uh, Skyscraper, oh, which God. was... Oh, geez. <laughs> it was definitely an improvement from San Andreas with the same directors, because I mean... San Andreas, San Andreas just took forever took to get going, and this is like this one. I mean, it just gets you right into the heart of it. It's just like so. It's like five different movies packed into one, and it's like, but it's still having a lot of fun, especially with the villains and spies mm-hmm. in it. Yeah, <laughs> I think San Andreas and Skyscraper both are the kind of movie where they're like, All right, we need to find a reason to get the guys in the theater and for their girlfriends to go with them. So yeah. the rock, the rock yeah. is the reason for the girl, and for the guys, it's just you know buildings falling down, and you know the rock flying a helicopter through collapsing buildings. It's just it's total formula. I, the, the, I kid you not. I, and I there's met, going, and apparently there's going to be a San Andreas too, according to what yeah, I'm saying. Yeah. Uh, I kid you not. I kid you not. I encountered one person who one time said that was the most realistic disaster movie they'd ever seen. San Andreas. <laughs> And I was like, I know you're a smart person. What the fuck are you talking about? Are they sure they want on drugs or something? I, <laughs> maybe it was caring for too many kids and he was exhausted and it was the first thing that came into his mind. I mean, if that's the case, then the 18's a documentary. I mean, fuck. How yeah, do you, yeah. how do you parachute yeah. into a stadium and not break both your legs? That's 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 some commando shit right there. <laughs> I, I guess. I mean, I was waiting for him to do the people's elbow on the ground, but it didn't happen. Um, it's good. Uh, um, I will say though, uh, in skyscraper's defense, at least it has Nev Campbell in there doing her thing, and it was good. Right? I, I I remember remarking that in the theater while I was watching it that it was good to see Nev Campbell on screen again. Just kicking ass, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, I grew up on Scream, you know what I'm yeah. saying, and I loved it. So it was good to see her. She so. does the exact same kind of scream. <laughs> she, matter of fact, she does. She kind of does more ass kicking than he does in Skyscraper, especially against the Nikita gal. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like he, yeah. like he's he's doing more like fucking like uh, running and jumping and falling and climbing. She's Ooh. the one that's kicking all. She's the one kicking all the ass. My sister hates that movie, by the way. 
Did, My sister hit I, me up. She, she she watched it. She watched it. And she was like, "Yo, this movie's dog shit." I can't wait for <laughs> Billy Blanks to show up and say, "This is not. This is this is direct to video." I swear, or some shit like that. I was I was I was with a friend of mine, and he's telling me how they went. They go to see Skyscraper, right? And like, Dude. all of a sudden, like they're watching it, and people started like making comments, like Mystery Science Theater. Yep. And somebody yells. Case. Somebody yells out, "Nice." They go, nice job. Where's fucking Hans Gruber? <laughs> <laughs> and like, I'm like, he's like, he's like, people are just going like, hey, 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 I got a great idea. How about there's a fat cop at the bottom of the, of the, of the, <laughs> of the building and he's talking to you the whole time. Yeah. Or, you know, he had an inner <laughs> dragon type. A death trap in your building, but why not just rewatch John Wick 2, which also has an Enter the Dragon type homage. So, yeah, you know, people were just slamming it, you know, and he said, he said, people were like laughing. He says, nothing against The Rock, but I mean, you know, it's got you know, its moments and yet it's just so lazy, but it's happened sometimes. So boring. Oh boy. Let's talk about Gridiron Gang at roll number 11. I thought we were doing 10. You, yeah. Now you're going into 11? <laughs> no, The Rock is just too cool. I'm sorry. It's, he's he to goes to 11. Go, uh, yeah, he's got to go to 13. Let's go to 13. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's just The Rock is commanding me. I, I don't know what's wrong with me. But uh, did anyone ever see this one? Because it's kind of an atypical kind of sports movie because he's training all these ex cons. And... I've always heard about it. I've never seen it. Yeah, because that's never been done before. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. What keeps it from being a Longest Yard uh, ripoff is just, apparently it was inspired by some actual stuff, but what's really cool is, I mean, it focuses, it starts off with all the gang violence even, and then slowly moves into the whole just training, people are showing up late, and he just flat out says, what the hell do you think you're doing here? You know, it's like, do you even want to exist? You want to go back in that cage? And it's pretty awe inspiring. Well, the good thing I like is exhibits in the movie too. And he kind of steps it up. You know, and it was really unexpected for him because, you know, he, you know, he was doing, you know, pimp my ride and he hadn't been in the most impressive movies at that time. And he's like, okay, you know, you know what exhibit, you can keep surprising me like this. This, this is pretty cool. <laughs> um, it's definitely an underrated overlooked kind of movie for whatever reason. It's just, I don't know. I consider sports movies action, just like Rocky and all that, but that's just me. Um, how about his cameo in Reno 911 Miami? Ah! Good. And I that was it. definitely where you started seeing him just do more and more cameo appearances. It's like, whoa, what? That's The Rock? What? <laughs> Man, the worst bomb defusal ever. <laughs> Boom! <laughs> Boom, gore everywhere. And I mean, it's like playing in the after credits or some shit. You're not even expecting that. It's just like just an additional laugh. <laughs> oh. mm -hmm. I guess we can finish it out with Be Cool since we've mentioned it so many times. I mean, it, he just has the best shit eating grins in this whole damn movie and just. Uh, he 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 belts out some pretty kick ass music in this actually, <laughs> but, yeah. Mm -hmm. I I think we'll just wrap it up there. Unless anyone has any other roles, I have not seen his Transformers Prime episode, so sorry. I... The, 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 <laughs> the the game plan. Oh, the really? Game, I like really? the game plan. I'm one of the few people who watched that who think who thought to myself, okay, if he's gonna do Disney movies. Let him be. Let him play an egotistical, you know, football player, and then all of a sudden he's got a daughter, and things have to change. And I think that's that's when I think I start to really start to appreciate how he is as an actor because he he does it where he's like he, he does it where he's playing like the Rock. Let's say you know the the the, the big time party time guy. And oh yeah. The way the way it flips around where he's got to be with a daughter and. You know, he she she. I think she numbs his tongue at one point. Where like, you talk, talk about like this. Oh and, God! <laughs> you know, it, it was just it's just fun to watch. It's one of the It's fun to watch him, not be the action hero, but be like the family. You know, the family man hero. You know. Damn and, it! 
You have done the impossible. Now yeah. you convince me that I must rewatch the shit fest. Yeah. All I remember true. from that is that Kyra Sedgwick was in it. Yeah. And I was like, why is Kyra Sedgwick in this? She's awesome. Too awesome for this. But I, I, I believe you. I will rewatch this at some point. It's got to be a hoot. And it does kind of have a Francis Capra kind of inspirational. Mm -hmm. Being a dad is tough shit. So I believe you. Uh, um, <laughs> there's an episode of my, that 70s show. Oh, yes. Father. Yes, that's Rocky Johnson. And it's Rocky. just so funny how he spouts it out. He's like, I'm going to learn my next akin, Dwayne Johnson. Because yeah. I... It, he really does a total Shatner kind of emphasizing. It's like... <laughs> it's like... Well, hell, fuck. Now that you're going in there, let's mention his awful appearance of Star Trek Voyager. It I has know. to be seen to be believed. It is great. Oh, my God. I didn't think it was horny. Yeah. It, it is so embarrassing. His acting is so not there yet, and yet it's just so much fun just seeing him just kind of come in and being like, I don't think you can take me. <laughs> Who the heck does he play? A Klingon? He plays like some other weird alien warrior race, and it's, they're doing a total running man kind of, you know, fight for ratings on TV or something. And it doesn't help that 709 has a very goofy looking choreographed fight scene. And the other characters are inserting their own unfunny commentary on the fight that just distracts from the whole thing. It, it's a total shitstorm. You gotta see it. Oh. <laughs> I'm sure you can YouTube it and you'll cringe with delight, just being like, oh my God. Oh, oh. Wait a minute, you know why it was on there? UPN had SmackDown on at the time. Yeah, it's bingo. So there yeah. you go. Hmm. crossover. Gotta up the ratings. Gotta up them. <laughs> but, oh, um, man. So well, we're at 16 here. Damn. I mean, do we want to end it there? Or is there four more roles we can do and make it a top 20 and just show that The Rock is really that awesome? <laughs> Let's say Hobbs and Shaw. I was gonna say, yeah. roll number seventeen, Hobbs and Shaw. <laughs> uh, great, great way that his character, that the two characters, Jason Statham and uh, Jason. I'm sorry, Jason. Am I saying his name right? It's Statham. Uh, Jason Statham. Statham. Yeah, and Statham are like teamed up, and it's it's kind of like a, it's a buddy movie, but it's not a buddy. It's like it's like they're it's a buddy movie, but it's like. You know the last, you know the last when they were in the Fast and the Furious, they really don't get along with each other. And this one, it's like, all right, we got to team up. It's the team up everybody wants to have. There's no Vin Diesel, like you said. So only it's like, only lots of Idris Elba as the Terminator. Yeah, and it's like yeah. it's like now now we're gonna have some fun. Oh yeah. The way the, the one part I love is them putting the helicopter a chain on the helicopter to bring it down. It becomes it's total in, it, Return of the Jedi by that point. This whole Samoan slash Ewok village it, yeah. is just taking it down. Whole, it's like, wow. Scene where the guys are coming to like, and, and it's like, and his cousin's in it, Roman Reigns. His cousin, Joey, uh, Joey, um, Roman Reigns, uh, Joey, Joey, uh, fight, no, uh, um, I know their last name. Because yeah, I, yeah, because he his cousin is also a stunt double, and so yeah, and it's yeah. definitely interesting just seeing how, even though it's a total reshoot. Clearly, I think I even saw in the theater it said like third unit Hawaii, and it's like it, it's still an interesting kind of addition to that because it's like they deactivated all these super mechanical guns, and so basically they're having it. It just gives them an excuse to fight all warrior style with just, you know, spears and everything. <laughs> it's mm -hmm. insane. Yeah, but the thing I loved about it was that, um, you know, I think that's the last one he's going to make before, you know, if he was ever to come back. Now, they, now they're now they going to have it. The next one is Dom has a brother and it's John Cena. Oh, wow. ah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, didn't, I, I didn't know uh, John Cena was Italian. Yeah, and it's like now they're making it. Yeah, I'm like, oh my god, are you freaking kidding me? <laughs> I mean, John Cena's had a career, but it's like, I mean, he's had some good movies. <laughs> some, some, so, yeah. Some, I want to see right. Cold Blockers, and I, I, I want to see some. I, you know, I saw the Marine. God knows how many times. <laughs> <laughs> so that nothing. <laughs> Perfect. But um, I want, I, you know, if if they're to do something with. 
his character and Jason Statham's character again. I want I want it to be them coming back for the last one. Perfect. But, you know, but this that movie was just so fun to watch, and it's not only. That, but I said his cousin was in it, Joe Anoy, An- Anoa, Anoy, who is his is really brother. annoying. No, 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 no. I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, no, ignore me. No. I'm just kidding. <laughs> if 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 you guys want to know something, that family goes back. There was a wrestler named Peter Chief My Chief High Chief Peter Maivia. And if you ever see the rocks tattoos on his mm-hmm. chest, his grandfather had the same thing done. It took them two days to do all those tattoos. And they weren't doing it. They were doing it with like some sort of like way they do it in Samoa. They don't use like a needle or anything like that. Definitely so, not a magic marker. <laughs> yeah. So um, it's not like what Roddy Piper did where he cut half himself black and half himself white. Oh, my God. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah. That, that happened. Um, yeah. But uh, the thing. The thing I got to say about it is that that you know if his if his if Roman Reigns goes into movies, he's got the ticket with his cousin. That's indeed. all I'm gonna say. Indeed, indeed. Mm-hmm. Oh man, Rob, tell me about role number eighteen. That is your favorite Southland Tales. Oh, I love Southland Tales. He's like um, the only guy who seems to know what's going on throughout the entire movie. Yeah, like he 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 he's definitely making some choices in there, and I love it. But uh, I think that's just you know the the brilliance of Richard Kelly. Uh, Richard Kelly, I think, is a fantastic film. I uh, I wish he would do more. Obviously, you know Donnie Darko, of course, is a classic. Ned Kelly. But, uh, <laughs> Ned Kelly. <laughs> Can't resist. I know, um, but. <laughs> Uh, I, I love Southland Tales as fucking weird as it is. Um, it's like a sprawling epi- it's, it's, it's definitely a film that feels more relevant to today than it ever did when it was first released. And uh, I think he's he's fantastic in it. You know, that's one of those worlds where he was just taking his chances, you know, and, and doing something that is just being looked at as, you know, muscle bound beefcake and uh, basically playing like a timid kind of like uh of uh, action star, you know, with the bug eyed and the you know the the nervous ticks, it was. Just, I I think it's just absolutely just you know misunderstood film and just utterly fantastic. And I wish people, especially nowadays after everything that's gone on, especially in twenty twenty, I think it deserves a second look just I to didn't see understand how. It, but it's definitely watchable, especially seeing Christopher Lambert as a bozo who shoots people from his car. I just remember all the WTF <laughs> moments, especially the blimp explosion. Oh my god, that is a giant ass explosion. <laughs> I'm not trying to shit on the movie, I just don't understand it. But it is an interesting, unusual, weird movie. And The Rock, I think, carries it. Even Sarah Michelle Geller presents a different side to her usual dramatic persona. There's Sean William Scott's also in that, and yeah, he's great in it too. Doesn't he like clone himself at one point or something? No, no. What happened is they go through a um a time anomaly in the middle of the That's desert. That's what it is, and yes. they get they get split in half because they go through the the time anomaly. Um, and there's mm-hmm. two boxer Santeros, and there's two um, it's uh, uh Roland Taverners. Uh, there's Roland and Ronald Taverner, and they think they're twin brothers, but they're actually the same person. That's just on, what it you know, sixty nine minutes apart. The uh, Richard Kelly's brilliant sixty nine minutes. <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a uh, it's a fantastic movie, and I wish people would give it a second look. I think it's great. All right, okay. I probably will then. Another movie I want everyone to rewatch because they clearly all hated it. Pain and Gain. <laughs> Uh, I can't do that. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I, I, I just the Rock was just brilliant in this. Just when he's like, "You want me to do what? Oh, kill people?" <laughs> just, uh, just the robbery scene is probably the most incompetent robbery I think I've seen in film in a while. And it's just, I just was gut busting laughing, even though it was just so stupid. And it's like, wow, okay, you know, just these guys were not ready to do all this unethical shit. <laughs> Didn't even realize what they were doing, really, <laughs> and yet they were criminal masterminds. Apparently, later on. <laughs> Did anyone see the shitty Hercules movie he made? No, I know, but I've seen it. It's I, not a good movie. 
but he no. was perfect as Hercules. But just I, from that mortal line that he goes, fucking centaur. It's not enough, but you've got to see it just for that one scene. Especially, I think he even punches a camel, even Conan style at one point. <laughs> oh, God. Okay. It's a really terrible movie. And it's just so funny seeing, if you can, you should look up the interview where he talks about they actually made his beard from some, like, yak's balls or something. And it's like, wow. An award-winning makeup designer working on a hack filmmaker's giant epic that was supposed to be a Paramount, you know, franchise and filmed miserably. <laughs> and I saw the underrated Mar- 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 version. Mar- too, isn't it, you had me at yak's balls. <laughs> Or you had the yak by the ball. I'm not making that up. That wasn't an actual interview. But it was just, it's better than Baywatch. I'll say that much. I'll say that. Wasn't that the year there were two Hercules movies that came out? Yeah. Yeah, yeah there was that awful Rennie Harlan movie. And then there was an Asylum one they did with a ex-wrestler. And yeah, his one was supposed to make the most money. And it bombed the most. That was the irony. It's like, good God. Yeah, okay. Yeah. It, to, to be honest, to be honest, I totally forgot that movie existed until you just mentioned it right now. Yeah, I I even <laughs> forgot it existed while I was going through his resume trying to make a list. It's like, oh, that's right, he did do that shitty Hercules movie. <laughs> hmm. uh, and, and I think I was even at a friend's house. It's playing on TNT nonstop, and my friend was just—he typically is pretty forgiving. And he's looking at this like, all I see on the screen is money. <laughs> he just blurs that out to me. All I see on the screen is money. Is there an actual movie going on here? Have you seen this? I'm like, I wish I didn't. <laughs> oh, but I'm man, yeah. since this is about roles, I, I just thought he was perfect as Hercules. He honestly, we would have never watched this forgettable movie had he not been in it. I mean, he's just and I really don't even know what he's going for with this movie. He's clearly not in Scorpion King mode, and yet at the same time, it kind of felt like he was trying to revisit that kind of legacy that started it all, and at the same time failed miserably. But yet, he tried. (laughs) There's only one Hercules, and his name is Steve Reeves. That's all I'm going to say. Oh, yeah. Steve and uh, who's the other Reeves? There's another Reeves before that. Buster Reeves. Those guys are fucking Buster Crab. Buster Crab. Okay, not Mustard Grab, but there's another George Reeves. That's who it is. Those George guys Reeves. played Superman. Those guys are awesome. Um, yeah, that, yeah, George Reeves plays Superman and Steve Reeves played Hercules. But the thing I got to say about the Hercules is that they were trying the Hercules movies, is that they were trying to restart a franchise. And yep. what, like you yep. said, it just did not, it did not take off because a lot of people did not want to see it. A lot of people were fed up. They had already done the King Arthur one. Oh, that, yeah. That oh, thing. yeah. Wait, no. which one? <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say which one. <laughs> which one? <laughs> and then, and then, and no, and then I love the uh, what was it? Um, I would love to see The Rock as King Arthur. That would be yeah, awesome. that would be good. But I'd love to see. Oh, there's also one. Uh, what is it? Uh, the Robin Hood one. Oh God. Yeah. So. Yeah, because we need another. We need another Robin Hood remake. Jamie Fox, fire your agent. Do it now. Oh. <laughs> Do it now, please. Do it now. Make it good. Um, anyway, um, yeah. uh, if no one wants to talk about G.I. Joe or Jumanji, I could throw in Moana as an honorable mention. I'll take I'll, 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 Because you're welcome. I'll take Jumanji uh, just, just because it's a fun kids movie to watch. That's all I'm saying. It's just a fun kids movie. The kid version of the Matrix, even though every kid was actually sneaking in and watching the Matrix at that day and age. <laughs> oh, yeah, it, it, it really is a fun, mindless movie. It, it's really inoffensive. And I saw so many people hating on it. I was like, I, there's far worse movies. This movie, I mean, they did it kind of a loving tribute to the you know original movie while, you know, what they could legally mention uh, and just. I mean, it was cool seeing him play opposite Jack Black and Karen Gillan. It's like, okay, I'm down. I'm totally down. It was actually like a pleasant surprise for me because those trailers were really awful. And those I, I, don't think, I don't think I saw them, but I know there was one picture that everyone kept 
Sherry, that's the rock had just the most unusual WTF face. And I'm like, is that good advertising? If you're just putting that in every blog for the movie. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, that, that about wraps us up. So I'm going to let everyone uh, plug their newest projects. Uh, Rob, what do you got? Go. Of course, uh, we are gearing up for the second season of the action junkies to be coming soon. Uh, we got a lot of good topics coming up. Um, In a world where two drunks <laughs> must defend every action movie ever made. That's true. Um, of course, you can find <laughs> us on Inst uh, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. You can find me as the Cinema Drunkie on uh, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Um, you can always find me also on uh, the House of Screams, our, our podcast, which I'm a permanent panel member on. Um, and yeah, uh, that's what I got going on. Oh, yeah. All right. Bruno. Bruno Mars, what are you currently I put, I put the link up on the late, late, late uh, movie and uh, TV page for um, Hog Wild. So if anybody yeah. wants to take a look at that. Cameron, I think I was the first one to tag you in that. Um, Thank you. But if anybody wants to take a look. Um, Don't you dare call me a hog, though. <laughs> <laughs> um, I gotta say this though about <clears throat> one day about that movie though one thing about that movie Patty D'Arbonville who you may or may not know from The Sopranos is in that movie and wait I wait wait say, 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 say the name again Patty D'Arbonville uh, Patty yeah she was the, she was the, the, the chief on uh, New York Undercover yes oh yes. yeah okay, okay. Fuck. This is one, I think, one of her first roles she did. I don't know how how far down the road she was acting wise, but um, she is cute as hell in this movie, and she makes a she makes a really good romantic lead. I'm I'm surprised her career kind of. Oh shit! Yeah, that's yeah. right. She was on Rescue Me, The Center, and she's now on Billions. Okay. Yeah. So shit, it's gonna be coming up, and then I got I got um I have plans for a podcast. No. That will be uh, <laughs> my fr my friends and me. Last Friday, we're talking. We said, "Hey, we're gonna let's do a podcast." So if that comes up, we will. Let, I will let you know when and where, and give you the name for it and all that stuff. So it'll you, be fun. You have my full dedication. Thank you, sir. Thank you, and that's it. All right, Mark, where's your next mark going to be left? Hmm. Well, like I said before. There's one certain film I'm hoping to review in the next couple of weeks. We'll see if I get that chance. But for me, you can just follow me on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram in general. So You got this. You got it. All right, German, what's going on in the gaming world? What are you currently gaming? Oh, uh, I bought Hitman 3 a couple of weeks ago, but I honestly really? still have not. I, well, I still haven't started it because I'm really lazy that way with games because it's like, oh, I got to learn a whole new control scheme, whatever. Anyway, <laughs> but Red yeah, Dead, I, I still play Red Dead Online every day, um, a little bit. Every day, on, folks. On Xbox, Mr. Misty on Xbox, uh, if anybody is looking. Yeah. And uh, yeah. you can find me on The House of Screams as well. Um, Don't and, fuck and, with him. And, he, the and best here, <laughs> it, is, it is my honor to be there and here. And uh, it's a pleasure to talk to you all. Shit, yeah. Send me a friend request, will you? What's your on on Xbox? Uh, no, yeah, send on uh, no Facebook. JJ J, J. Bruno and David Gerben. Okay, yeah. done. All right, um, yeah. So keep right, keep shooting for the sky, cowboy. Um, and thank you all for joining in this very special episode. Oh, uh, may I may I please please point it out today is uh, the late great John Vernon's birthday. Yes, oh, John Ian Vernon. So. Uh, Played countless evil sheriffs, fought various leeches and other creatures. He he yeah. is pretty awesome. Best role he ever had was uh, Fletch no Fletcher in uh, the Outlaw Josie Wales, when he says, oh, "There's yeah. an old story. Don't tell me it's don't piss down my back and tell me it's raining." <laughs> oh fuck yes! Yeah, I I and I always forget that that line is from that incredible movie, but it is just one of those is like that that is just such a great <laughs> just expression. <laughs> And I mean, 
anyone who hasn't seen it, um, Morgan Freeman will not forgive you. That's his favorite Western ever. <laughs> um, thank you all. Those were the top 20 roles of Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Hmm. 20. I can't believe we made it to 20. God, 20? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <Good word. sighs> all right. Have a good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Wipe the floor. Night, that was awesome. <laughs> we'll return after these messages. Hey, feeling down? Feeling low? Not enough podcasts about movies in your life? Why not try? They must be destroyed on sight! The new Podcast Cure All, sure to get you right with the world and on a path to better living. We have exploitation, we have Italian horror, we have zombies, we have slashers, we have crime films, we have spaghetti westerns, we even have sci-fi and sex comedies. So take a dose of... They must be destroyed on sight! As needed, and let the hosts, Lee Russell, Daniel Harper, Paul Romali, and the odd guest host, Cure What Ails Ya. Warning, may cause atrophy, African consumption, black fever, bone shave, chin puff, colic, cramp colic, dropsy of the brain, elephantitis, grocer's itch, jaundice, mania, miasma, mortification, palsy, pox disease, rheumatism, scurvy, St. Anthony's fire, summer complaint, and worm fit in some people. Consult a physician before listening. Hey, I heard you like movies. I heard you like to hustle. I heard you like podcasts. Well, guess what? There's a podcast for you out there called The Home Video Hustle. Damn right. Every Friday, we talk about whatever movie PJ picks out the bag. What does that mean? Every Wednesday on our YouTube page, I put a bunch of movies in a bag, and PJ picks one out at random. Mm -hmm. And then we just watch it. We talk about it for maybe like an hour, hour and a half, two hours. Whatever we feel like doing, wherever the conversation leads us. But do we actually talk about the movie? Most of the time. Ah. Tangents galore. Yes. So believe me, we may be a movie podcast, but it's not always about movies. We might talk about video games. Mm -hmm. Music. music. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. the big one, music. Uh, sometimes we might get a little bit of politicalness in there. Yes. Sometimes we may just, oh, we know what we like to do. We like to tell stories, PJ. Ah, yeah, yes. I am the master storyteller <laughs> yes. of the podcast realm. <laughs> Undefeated. So if you like to hear about movies, video games, whatever foolishness comes to our mind, the most random stuff you can think of, check out the Home Video Hustle. You can find us on the Stitchers, yes. the Google Play, yes. Apple Podcasts, what else? Podbean, what else? Podcast Addict, goddamn, all that. Ain't no reason you can't get your hustle on. We everywhere, worldwide, baby. Hustle, motherfucking hustle. Hey, we can't cuss in the promo, PJ. Ah. We gotta be family friendly. There may be podcasts out there that don't want his hair to say. Ah. 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 Good fun <laughs> stuff. Well, <laughs> you. <Yeah. laughs> no, don't. Don't run the listeners away, PJ. Ah, I'm sorry. But this is going kind of long. Yes. So we'll end this and say, hey, check out the Home Video Hustle every Friday on all the various podcast outlets. Peace. Peace. As far back as I can remember, I always wanted to be a gangster. And while Witch didn't make it to the top of the world, he did make the Gangs of Hollywood podcast. So join the gang and enjoy a movie review podcast about movie gangs, gangsters, mobsters, and the mayhem they cause. You can find GOH Podcast on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at GOH Pod at www.gohpod.com as well as your favorite podcast listening app. And remember, say hello to your little friend for me. If you take two old punk rockers who are past their prime, put them in front of a movie screen and give them a podcast, what do you get? Cinema punks. Cinepunks. It's the mixtape of movies. Did you ever see a film at such a young age it left you traumatized with cinematic wounds? Oh, necrophilia. Oh, oh, oh. It's a dead issue, man. Don't don't push it. 
Cinema PsyOps is a weekly podcast documenting an ongoing experiment on the mind of an unwilling test subject. No one should have to watch this movie. Oh, no one should have to watch this. No one should have to watch this movie. Surprisingly, it's not a topic that a lot of people really want to tackle. I'm shocked, prudes. I know, really. Right? It's the next sexual frontier that no one wants to explore. I am, in the most sincerest of senses, disappointed in you. It takes a powerful goddess like Connie, jam her arm down the monster's throat and kill it. Oh, I'm still tripping out over that. Even as a kid, I was like, I gotta find a girl like that. Every week, I, I get a new look of disappointment that I never thought I could get it's out of. It's unimaginable. At 12 years old, you should not be watching this movie. Obviously. At 13, you should not be. 14, you shouldn't be. I'm not entirely sure even 17-year-olds should be watching this movie. Just because you're offended by something doesn't mean that you have the right to demand that it doesn't exist. Watching this film again, I had all of this like little nerd glee with everything that kept little history up. doll yeah, popping up absolutely. at you. So I totally loved this film. Hey, I know why you you know, couldn't see that. It's because your brain's warped from watching this shit at twelve years old. Yeah, this is this is a rough movie. I told you ahead of time when we were getting ready to do it that it was. How did you watch movie. this shit at twelve? Because physical wounds heal, cinematic ones don't. Listen to Cinema Psyops. Hey everybody, I'm Corey. And I'm Zach. And we're the hosts of Podcasting After Dark, a cast dedicated to late night horror and sci-fi of the 80s and 90s, often found on HBO and Cinemax. You know, the movies your parents didn't want you watching as a kid. You can find us every other week on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Podbean, and Stitcher. This is what you want. This is what you get. It's time, let's check our cue, baby Pair it with a couple brews, baby We love good movies We love the bad ones, too So we watch them all and pass their lessons on to you Oh, yeah Everything I learned from movies Helps to make life a little bit groovy With a one last plot holes of gratuitous boobies It's time to get busy With your friend Stephen Izzy At eilfm.podbean.com Welcome to Who Was She Podcast. I'm your host, Tara Jabari. After a decade working in documentaries, marketing, and all things digital media, I found that podcasting is a strong medium to share stories. After years of producing for others, I decided to start my own biographical podcast. Who Was She will focus on the life of a woman throughout Baha'i history. The first season is about Lydia Zeminoff. Lydia's story explores the subjects of the power of language and faith. Her father invented the universal language Esperanto, and she came from a Jewish family and became a Baha'i. She grew up during World War I and was killed during World War II in a concentration camp, despite heroic efforts to save her life. How can one person's life intersect with so many others? connect across borders, and inspire a biography which inspired this podcast. Over the next few weeks, I will share her story with you and the lives that were most affected by her and those who affected her life as well. They include her father, Ludwig Semenov, her spiritual mother, American journalist Martha Root, and the Baha'i German soldier Fritz Mako, who worked for the resistance undercover while having to serve the Nazi party. I want to thank the author Wendy Heller and George Ronald Publishing for their blessing to let me use Heller's biography, Lydia, The Life of Lydia Zeminoff, Daughter of Esperanto, as a main and instrumental resource for this podcast. So please subscribe and learn about this amazing woman who traveled through three continents in an effort to bring unity through the power of language. You can also find more information on our Instagram, Facebook, and Pinterest at Who Was She Podcast. Music was composed and performed by Sam Red. I am your host, Tara Jabari. 
Join us next time as we begin our journey about Lydia Zemanoff. Hi, everybody. It's Mac Jackson. I wanted to invite you to a new site called the Forever Adventure Network. This website has everything. Pictures, videos, blogs. There's original music by Harmony Constant. Two podcasts. One is the MacGyver podcast, where we celebrate Richard Dean Anderson, his iconic roles, and how it's influenced our lives. There's episode discussions, interviews, and life conversations. The second podcast is the Never Gets Old podcast, where we celebrate all the best things that we love in life, from TV, movies, music, and comics. The site is also the home for the MacGyver SG-1 audio series, an ongoing adventure series that continues the adventures of MacGyver and SG-1. There are also multiple stores to choose from for all of your pop culture and adventure needs. Come on by and check us out today. And thanks for joining the adventure. Are you sick of the same old stale podcasts? Well, then join Vanessa and Darren as they dissect movies of all kinds. The two lifelong cinema lovers bring their favorites, curiosities, and first-time watches to the operating table and inject them with a healthy dose of snark. Then there's the waiting room where they examine books and short stories. So just look for them on Apple Podcasts and where fine podcasts are available. They're part of the Legion Podcast Network. Follow them on Twitter at VD Clinic Pod. Join them on Facebook at facebook.com slash groups slash VD Clinic Pod. Or email them at vdclinicpod at gmail.com They're ready to cure what ails you. (laughs) And still, they just might be a little contagious. We now continue with our program. Follow us on the web on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. The podcast is available on Podbean, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Anchor, Apple, and anywhere else podcasts are available. Feel free to review our show and leave comments on any of those sites. Thanks a million for listening. It's a jacked up review show.